everybody, it's me, Cory T, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about self-love and why it's so important. And to do that, I'm gonna read you a little passage from this book, which is amazing, and it's called You Are the One You've Been Waiting For by Richard C. Schwartz. Highly recommend. It looks like this. I know it's backwards on there. Um, but highly recommend, it's really, really good. Before I jump into this video, I just wanna remind you that I have two days left before my new course, Let Love In, begins. It's a five week program, which gives you loads of time to get to know the others in the group and to create some really amazing new habits, new neural pathways, new narratives in your mind about love and about your patterns in love and who you are in love. If you've been stuck in a cycle or you've been finding yourself wanting people who are at a distance or falling for people who are not available, then this course will be really, really beneficial to you. And it's gonna be really fun, empowering, and we're gonna be focusing on forward-facing narrative transformation. So we're gonna look a little bit about why we are the way we are, a little bit of the past, but not too much because the change happens in the now. So if you want to join this course to gain some accountability, some friendships, and some really amazing insights into yourself and how you can let love in, then please come along. The link is below and the discount code is still active and it's just let love in. So really easy to remember. Okay, so I'm gonna read you this passage, which really I think summarizes so well why self-love and the way that we treat ourselves and the parts of us within us, the feelings, the sensations within us is so important because so often we're judging ourselves, we're criticizing ourselves, we're wishing a feeling would go away. We're wanting ourselves to think differently, be different, be more this, be less that. And we're always doing that to ourselves. And actually the way that we talk to ourselves really does have a massive impact on our overall sense of self-love and self-worth. So bear with me while I read this until you get the message at the end of it. I really think it's worth a listen. So imagine that you inherited from your parents a magical kitchen in your home from which you can obtain any kind of quality food because your parents fed you unconditionally. You learnt to do the same for your many children. They are happy because they love your food. Your food is so nourishing and satisfying that they never overeat or crave candy or other kinds of junk food. You never use food to punish or motivate them. They trust that they are worthy of being well fed just because they are your children. They don't fight because each one knows that there is plenty of food for everyone. You also give freely to friends, neighbours and those in need of food, just for the pleasure of sharing. You know that you don't need to hoard because your food supply never runs out. Then one day, a man knocks on the door and offers your children a steady supply of candy and pizza if they will take care of him emotionally. Because you and your kids are so full and you can see that he doesn't take good care of his own kids, your response is, no, thank you. We have plenty of food of our own. On another day, a different man knocks. He is like you in that he has many children whom he feeds generously and who are happy and satisfied. He is attracted to the cuisine in your magical kitchen, but he doesn't need it because he likes to cook and he has plenty of food of his own. His children love playing with yours and would love to live in your house. But because they know that he will care for them no matter what happens with you, they trust him to decide where to live. You invite him to share your home and you love how much the two of you enjoy each other's cooking. Both children relish in mixed cuisine that now comes from your kitchen. Now imagine that you live in a different household. You're very poor and have little food for your children. Because they're starving, the youngest and weakest of your kids cry all the time and beg you to find someone to feed them. Their desperation drives you crazy and you lock them in the basement so they aren't always in your hair and you're not always reminded of their suffering. That's the way your parents taught you to handle problem children. As hard as you try to ignore the sobs of those young ones, however, you still hear them through the floorboards. The urgency of their need is like a constant gnawing in the back of your mind. Some of your older children lose trust in your ability to take care of the family. They take on adult-like responsibilities, prodding you to work harder, trying to contain or calm the ones in the basement and searching for food. Because these older ones aren't equipped to handle this level of responsibility, they become rigid and controlling. 
They're constantly critical of your work habits and performance and they expend enormous amounts of energy trying to keep the basement children at bay. As the guy with the pizza and candy heads towards your door, the basement children smell the food before he arrives. They go insane with joy at the prospect of being fed and possibly released from their exile. They idolize the candy man and they're willing to do anything to please him. You and your older kids are hungry, exhausted, impressed with how happy the candy man makes the basement children feel. The possibility is very appealing of no longer having to deal with them and instead letting them attach to someone else. Consequently, despite the misgivings about the guy's demands and the poor quality of his food, you and the older children agree to satisfy his emotional needs in return for steady meals. He turns out to be abusive at times, but your youngest kids fear starving and being returned to the basement. Also, while he is increasingly stingy with the pizza and candy, the younger kids are addicted to it. Every time you bring up the topic of throwing him out, they override you. Now, imagine that the food in the story is really love and the children are different parts of you. If you identify with the first parent who has the magical kitchen, you don't need to read the rest of this book. That's because when you love and accept your parts unconditionally, simply because they are in you, they won't be attracted to the false promises of certain other people. And when you find the right partner, your parts won't be so dependent, demanding, protective, or easily hurt that they create constant dramas to make you tolerate abuse. Instead, they will each love your partner in their different ways, enriching your experience of intimacy, secure in the knowledge that if they are hurt by him, you are there for them and you will deal with him. If you're like most people in this culture, however, you've learned from parents and peers to exile parts of you. Therefore, the basement of your psyche is filled with love-starved, vulnerable children. Because they get so little from you, they will be obsessed with finding someone they imagine can rescue them out of their desperation, will blind you to that person's faults. So they are likely to make you pick Mr. Wrong. And then, because you are so needy and vulnerable, will either make you stay with that person too long or overreact to perceived hurts from him or will try to control how close or distant he gets to others. So where can you find the equivalent of the magical kitchen, a boundless fountain of love from which your parts can draw? It's the last place you would ever think to look, your self. But your parts have been convinced by the messages from our culture and by the way that you've treated them in the past that their only hope for finding love that they crave is in the outside world. Tell me what you think of that. Because when I read that, I was like, oh my God, that is so clear. And I've been doing a lot of talking lately about parts, the different parts within us and how we have the inner child and the inner teenager and our self, our higher self, the shy version of us and the hungry version of us and the young version of us and the old version of us and the, the demanding version of us and the performer and the introvert. We have all these different parts of us and they need to be loved and cared for and accepted by us, the self. And when we're operating from self, we are powerful and we can do anything. But so many of us identify with these younger parts and think that they are us and they run the show when they're not, they're not us. They're just a part of us that we can learn to love. So in my course, Let Love In, I'm gonna be teaching you and talking about how you can start to love the parts, how you can start to recognize the parts within you. Now, this book is all about internal family systems, which is a concept and a methodology that some practitioners use to be able to help you recognize the different parts within you. And I have found this works to be so incredibly helpful for me. So I wanna bring this in to the course and I think you'll find it really, really useful. I'll be using the research that I've done. I'll be using my own experience. This book is really, really helpful. That's really good reading to do if you wanna do that alongside the course. So if you wanna come along, I'd love to see you there. It's gonna be such a fascinating um, transformational as always I always aim to make my courses transformational and that's the feedback that I generally always get so if you'd like to come along to this one if you've been on the fence about courses before I'd really recommend this one it's going to be beautiful 
and you'll meet lots of other people. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.